that has been his biggest theme, no? the strength of the peasantry and the rural area hanggang sa naging decadent sa city. So he has this, I think he has this nostalgia for also for the for the countryside. No? That that him his main concern, the imagined nation in the sense, and how it's formed from, in his case, from the Ilocano hanggang sa naging Filipino. Third year college pa lamang, uh, nag-aaral ako noon ng journalism sa USD. Teacher ko si Ofelia Di Malanda, who that year was the chairperson of the National Book Awards. Uh, ginawa yung awarding noon uh, sa SGV Tower sa Ayala Avenue sa Makati. Uh, Karag-karag ako ni Ofi Di Malanda. At uh, si FC Nilo siya, isa sa mga awardee sa National Book Awards during that year dahil sa translations ng ng uh, mga classics in Japanese from from Japanese to Filipino at ito ay pinablish ng Solid Solidaridad Bookshop. Um, pinakilala siya ni Manong Frank. Si si Ofi pinakilala sa akin si Manong Franky tapos syempre I have read his works earlier. So I was prepared to give him a rundown of the things I read and I knew about him from from the things that Ofi would say about him etc etc. Tapos sinabi niya, una niyang statement sa akin ay, my, my young son, flattery will not get you anywhere. Tapos nagtawanan kami nila, Ofi Di Malanta. And then he uh, he was grandfatherly, fatherly, grandfatherly to me. Uh, that was the very first time I met him. But uh, subsequently, uh, I would see him during book launches. All on the whole, is very supportive of young writers. But the second time I met him was when I was a young writer, um, teaching in, in UP Diliman. Uh, I've been teaching in UP since 88 and then uh, around 1991 or 1992 uh, I was invited to speak to uh, the Young Writers Forum ng Philippine Pen and uh, uh, he was one of those who, who said that I should um, focus on my writing and it's good that I'm writing but at the same time I should write with a Filipino soul and not allow myself to adopt the mannerisms, yung universalisms, ng, 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 yung pag-essentialize ng pagsusulat, which is typical sometimes of some sectors in academia. Pero ang pinaka-memorable moments ko with Manong Frank is every time we have meetings in Philippine Pen, uh, lagi niya ako pinapatawag sa room niya. Parang nanay-tatay ko sila nalo ni Manong at ni Manong Tessa, yung wife niya. He looks poker face. He looks suplado, but he's actually a very tender person. He was writing in Ilocano, but using English. And that made his writing more unique. And proof of that is the fact that his work is being translated worldwide. His works have been translated by at least, if I'm not mistaken, his books have been published in 29 to 30 languages. I think the other thing that I remember about Manning Frankie is that according to Edwin Thumbo, uh, who is something like a national artist in Singapore, um, he, when I interviewed him for my dissertation, my book Migrations and Mediations will come out, UP Press, uh, 2016. And, uh, in, in that book, there's a chapter that says that Manong Frankie was the person who assembled different writers from across Southeast Asia to create a Southeast Asian-ness uh, a sense of community among writers because for the longest time we are being essentialized as part of, of Asia and uh, there's this huge hegemonic tradition of East Asia, especially China and India and Southeast Asia has to create a more unique impression of themselves and by creating a Southeast Asian identity, not necessarily in terms of according to Manong Frank, in terms of similarities in culture but largely because Southeast Asians must put themselves up against the hegemony of China and India. I think he will be known not only for his writing, not only for his leadership among his contemporaries in Southeast Asia, but most importantly, he's a very kind person, a gentle person, uh, and somebody who believed uh, in the capabilities of his, of his compatriots to do something worthwhile for his country. 
So, mahal na mahal namin si Manong Frankie because of these reasons. The God Stealer. The old man really looked ancient, and in the light of the stove fire that lived and died at one end of the one room house, Sam could see the careworn face, stoic and unsmiling. Sam took in everything. The hollow cheeks, the wide, scraggly hair, the horned hands, and the big bone knees. The patriarch was half naked like the other Ifugaos, but his loincloth had a belt with circular bone embellishments, and around his neck dangled a necklace of bronze. To Sam, the old man extended a bowl of rice wine, and Sam took it and lifted it to his lips, savored its gentle tang and acridness. He then sat down on the mud-splattered floor. Beyond the open door, in the blaze of the bonfire, the pigs were already being butchered, and someone had started beating the gongs, and their deep sonorous wang rang sharp and clear above the grunts of the dying animals. The light in the hut became alive again, and showed the few artifacts within, an old gray pillow, dirty with use, a few rusty tipped spears, fish traps, and a small wooden trunk. The whole house smelled of filth, of chicken droppings and dank earth. But Sam Christie ignored these smells and attended only to the old man who had now risen, his bony frame shaking, and from a compartment in the roof, brought out his black and ghastly looking god, no taller than two feet, and set it before the fire in front of his grandson. I think his main contribution, especially in the writing in English, is his epic uh, ambition. I think siya lang yun, as far as I know. Yung meron siyang five-volume, ano, yung kanyang tetralogy, which traces the evolution of the pre-Hispanic Ilocano, kasi Ilocano siya, so he uses that as his base yung peasant, no? the Ilocano peasant, uh, na pasama sa revolution and then the, the, during the post-war era hanggang sa it became uh, bourgeois no? and then became a power broker. That has been his biggest theme, no? the strength of the peasantry and the rural area hanggang sa naging decadent sa city. So he has this, I think he has this nostalgia for also for the, for the countryside. No? That became him his main concern, the imagined nation in the sense, and how it's formed from, in his case, from the Ilocano hanggang sa naging Filipino. I haven't seen him really get angry over, well, although maybe hindi ko lang nakita. Mahilig siya magdebate, you know, like, like every other right. But uh, I guess it's, it's never personal. A lot of people go to his place. You know, I usually go to his bookshop kasi lagi siyang nagpapainom. No? He is diabetic, so he doesn't really drink a lot, no? it's very controlled. Uh, but he always has an open bar. When he travels, he uh, he buys liquor, and then when his friends come, there is a alcohol from all over the world. So it's, it's, it's always nice to drop by there no? and, and, and drink. But perhaps the most, the thing that like, surprised me most was that some years ago, there was a pen congress. Uh, I think it was just the, the dinner break. And then he he came he spoke a bit and then he took out his harmonica and he started playing and it was pretty good and I've never he heard him do that again and uh, I think that that's one side of him that I never expected and I think a lot of people were surprised you know? so I think it was a harmonica from he picked up in it. I I don't remember no parang from from the Second World War or something from some. Uh, this is pre pretty good. So I think that's his contribution. And, and he has lived the writer's life in a sense. He has done the work. I think he's very prolific. He, he has set a certain standard no, in terms of the writing and uh, the ambition the, the, from where later generations can, can proceed. I, 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 told, I told this to yung Tagapaite because he's, he's a very good craftsman. Si Baldemar, sabi ko, you know, sabi ko, you will be rich and you will be famous, but you will never be great until you make social comment. Mm -hmm.